A few months ago, I was contacted by the good folks at Hicktop and asked if I would like to try out one of the new 3D printers that they had under development. And I said yes, and they arrived a couple of days ago. I got this big box here and also a smaller box that just came uh, two days ago. So let's do an unboxing and see what's in there. Okay, in the first smaller box, there's going to be some boxes of filament that they sent. There's three of them here. There's a fluorescent green, a r red, and also a dark blue that they sent. And this is the special filament that's supposed to be good for the high-speed printing. Here I'm opening up the box here for the first time. And if you take a look closely uh, at the three rails that, uh, yeah, there they are with the arrow you can see that those are identical. So it's a modular design where all of the rails with the stepper motors built inside of them and the lead screws, they're all exactly the same. Oh, here I'm getting to the base part of this uh, 3D printer and it's packaged really well and I was couldn't even pull it out of there. And I saw right away why that box was so heavy because I had to take it over and get the foam piece out and then as I pick this piece up, I saw that this is cast aluminum base, so it's really pretty beefy and heavy. So uh, I, I immediately figured out how, why that box was so dadgum heavy. The assembly instructions for this 3D printer are pretty straightforward, and there's nothing really tricky about it. Uh, but because this unit, the base is so heavy, and they want you to kind of hang it off of an edge. You can see I'm getting ready to uh, put one of the rails on. And yet, there you just saw me check to make sure that they were all identical. I didn't, it says that in the manual, but I hadn't read that part yet. And I was just kind of holding them, holding them up to each other to check. Uh, and then uh, I didn't know about the, the little tool that I found later inside that little bag. Uh, so I was getting my Allen wrenches to uh, put this thing together. But it goes together pretty quickly, and I'm going to be showing you some pictures because I know as I'm doing this with the tripod sitting on the table there, uh, it's still kind of hard to get a, a good view of what I'm actually doing. So there's like, I think, eight screws. I think they were M3 by 16 with a little lock washer, and they screw into the bottom of that rail there. And then, of course, once you get one on, trying to figure out how I'm going to hold the other one and, you know, hold it and get it in place and get it screwed. It's It would be easier if you had a, a second person to kind of hold things, but uh, I managed to get it done. And, uh, you know, right now I'm just putting the things on kind of loose. I didn't want to put them on too tight. Uh, and it says that in the instructions because you'll need to come back and Make sure you tweak things uh, as you're putting that cross member piece on. Um, you'll need to uh, have a little play so that you can move the holes around and get them lined up just right. Right here I'm going to show you a picture that I took with my phone to show what I'm actually doing here because I realize you can't really see what I'm fastening there on the bottom. So here's a picture that will show that. Okay, here I'm getting ready to put the uh, cross member on, or I guess that would be the x-axis. And again, that's what you can see why you need to leave the uh, other screws a little bit loose so that you can get these things lined up because there's, there's not really big clearance holes uh, for those M3 screws. So it's a little, uh, a little tricky to move stuff around. And if you don't leave the first ones loose and come back and tighten those later, you will have to... Uh, 
do like I'm doing here. I, I had left them a little bit loose, but I'm actually going back and loosening them a little bit more just so I can uh, get all these holes lined up properly. Okay, so once I got all the screws started, I'm tightening these up here, and then you'll see that I uh, pull out my camera and take some pictures, and I'll show those here so you can see what I was tightening up because you can't really see it from this view. And then I flip it back over, and again, I'm, that's where I was taking the other pictures, and I'm coming back and tightening these up. And now I'm getting ready to put on the um, extruder. If you have any questions about this 3D printer, please put them in the comments down below. I try to read all the comments and uh, I'll also have a link in the video description of the Hicktop website. Okay, you see I decided to turn this around here to put this on and this, this part was probably the, one of the most difficult of the whole assembly and it's just because trying to get your hands in there and get those started and uh, it's just hard to see what you're doing so uh, but there are I think four screws that hold that extruder head on so uh, it's not impossible but it's uh, it was a little uh, tricky Here you can see I have my little magnet tool that I got out of my toolbox thinking that that would help me uh, hold the screws because it was such a tight place to get into but I found out quick that the uh, screws were stainless so they're <laughs> They wouldn't work with the little magnet tool. Now I'm getting ready to uh, fasten the brackets for the spool holder. And it's uh, kind of a unique uh, spool holder, uh, at least from what I've seen. And I really like it. It's, uh, it works out really well. And I'll also show some pictures that I took here to... Uh, to show how this thing works. Now I'm getting ready to fasten the uh, support brackets that go behind these uh, uprights or, or rails, I guess. Uh, and then I'll be uh, connecting the wires uh, to where they go in the back. There's a bunch of plugs back there and you'll see those here in just a minute. It was putting these little brackets on where I ran into a few problems because there was a couple of holes that, although they were tapped, they you know didn't chase the thread, so there was some metal gunk down inside of them, and I had trouble getting the screw to go in, so I had to uh, just pull everything out of the way and, and come back and take a screw and take my time and get it started and kind of you know chase the threads using one of the stainless steel screws. And I mentioned uh, about having, you know, trouble getting the uh, extruder head and all because that was difficult. And part of the reason why it's difficult is because you can't really use a magnet uh, to hold on to the screw, uh, which would have made things really easy. But the, uh, the screws were all stainless steel, so they, you know, the magnet wouldn't, uh, wouldn't work with those. Okay, so I finally got those little support brackets, uh, got the holes cleaned out, the threaded holes uh, cleaned out where I could get the screws in and finally got those all in and tightened up. So now here I am uh, going through the wiring and, and the cabling is really nice. The cable all runs down through the uh, modular rails, so it's pretty neat. There's no wires flopping around 
and they all just kind of come out the back there and then you just plug them into the plugs. One problem I did have is a couple of the plugs, the one for the extruder and the one for the bed, I could not get uh, those in because there was a label that at first I thought it was a metal label, but it turned out to be just a sticky label that uh, the hole in it just wasn't big enough for the plug. So I kind of peeled that back and got them in, uh, you know, got the plugs in there. And then I came back later and just cut that label with scissors and put the, uh, put the uh, bed and the extruder above where they go. That way I would know which one's which, but uh, I just kind of cut it around the, uh, the plug so that there was plenty of room and then it worked fine. Okay at this point I've realized that I haven't run across a, a USB thumb drive or an SD card or anything like that so I'm kind of going around and checking all the foam in the packaging and looking in different places trying to see and then I realized that I guess there just isn't any so I, I just continued on and plugged everything in and started to do the first uh, power up. Okay, got this thing all assembled. I did fire it up a minute ago and I'll, I'll fire it up for y'all, but let me just say this thing is a beast. It has this really heavy base. It's built like a brick. And so far, I'm liking the build quality. It does have, uh, everything is just super strong. You put your spool right here. So you've got a magnet to catch right here. So your spool will go here. You bring the filament through this tube and then down through uh, here into the extruder. And it also has uh, all enclosed here in this little metal box. It's got a uh, filament sensor. So if you run out of filament, it will, uh, it will stop. It's kind of cool if you notice, you look through here, there's a stepper motor in there and one in there. They're all concealed, uh, which is kind of neat. It's a real clean look. Like I said, just really super heavy duty and weighs a ton, I'm going to tell you. Now, one thing I did notice too is this is the little uh, screen that you use to control it. It plugs in where it's got the little cable coming out of here, the cord, and then it's got an RJ11 connector. Or actually, it's even smaller than that. It's a little teeny one. But it plugs in. But I notice there's no holes or anything to mount this. I mean, I guess, you know, you put it wherever you want, uh, to the side here or something. But I would have thought they might have had something where you could fasten it uh, right here. I, mean, I suppose some double-sided tape or something uh, would work well enough to, to get it there. Another thing that I thought was kind of odd, and again, maybe this is because this is a brand new deal and it's not out yet. I don't know. But uh, back here on the side, and I'll shoot a picture with my camera and post it up here. There's a slot for the SD card and also a place for a USB connection as well as there's a USB connection plug in the back. But I've looked all through this stuff and I did not get a little USB card. Uh, I didn't get an SD card. If it's on here somewhere, I haven't found it yet, but I've gone through all the foam uh, stuff because I thought for sure it would be stuck in there. The only thing that was really small was this little bag and it had this thing which I didn't even realize what this was because I just used my own Allen wrenches. But this has uh, some little tools that you can put in here uh, to make an Allen you know Allen wrench screwdriver kind of thing. So that's pretty nice. So that was in here. A couple little packages of screws, which are M3 by 8 and M3 by 16, and they all have uh, these little uh, lock forcers. And there wasn't any of the M3s extra. I didn't drop any. Uh, I did drop a washer, but there was two extra on the longer ones, and also two extra lock washers. So I 
kind of fudged and took one off of there. So I had had plenty of stuff and still had a couple of screws left over. Uh, but like I said, here's the directions. I'm going to go in and start uh, studying those, I guess, and see if I'm supposed to go online to get, they, they mention in the back of this book, to use um, Cura, uh, which I will probably go download. Uh, but I guess I guess that's the plan you're supposed to go on there down. But no, I, I'm just surprised. But I've never got a a 3D printer that doesn't have either a USB thing and or an SD card with a test file and stuff like that. But anyway, maybe it's because this one, maybe this one isn't released yet. I'm not sure. Uh, like I said, when I put in that number on the box, went on the website, it showed a, a wholly di a different printer and I thought that's what this was but it's it's similar but it's not the same uh, same printer so anyway let me fire this thing up the one thing I thought was pretty nice is right here uh, where you plug your power cable in in the back I guess I'm out of shot now but right back here they had like a little paper label that went over that hole where you plug the power cord in and then what it was is it was a note to remind you to look at this little slot right here to make sure that it's on either 115 or 230. So this one was already set up for 115, so uh, I didn't have to switch that. But it's nice that they put that little reminder on there because a lot of people will forget that and just fire it up and sometimes cause problems. So let's flip the switch here and fire it up. I don't know if you'll be able to see that screen from there. And I'm probably going to need my glasses. But if I go to the top one, it says control. Uh, and if I go to home, and then it's got XYZ and then uh, home right in the middle. So we'll just home this here. Okay, I'm going to have to look into that because I, you know, I don't see any kind of limit switches on here, so I don't know if there, there may be some in there that you can't see. I don't know, but uh, you know, usually when you're home, it comes down, so I'll, I will check into that and see if there's something different about this one. But anyway, I'm uh, going to uh, go ahead and carry this thing inside and take the filament inside and get ready to see if I can get a print off of this thing. So I'll be back here in just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to try to show how to do the manual bed leveling with this new Hickok, uh, Hicktop uh, 3D printer. I've already homed the machine and home position on this machine is with the nozzle all the way up high so you don't even see it in this view. Uh, and the reason I go ahead and home it first is because when I come over here to this screen and you see I have auto bed leveling and manual bed leveling, the MBL is the manual bed leveling. When I push that, the first thing it's going to do is try to home the machine. So if you've got it down here, it's still going to spend the time to come up. So I've already homed that uh, and now I'm going to hit the uh, manual bed level button. It will go through the homing real quick and then it will come down here to the lower left hand corner. Okay, now you see the screen has switched to the manual bed leveling screen and it's really simple. It's basically going to check the four corners. So to start off, uh, I'm going to set this. Uh, you can also tell how much adjustment. It's got 10 millimeters, uh, 1 millimeter, or 0.5. I'm sorry, 0.1 millimeter. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it to go to this lower left hand corner or 
far, I should say, far right back corner. And once it gets there, then I can bring it down using the plus or minus. Minus will bring it down the amount you have highlighted here. And I'm going to put it on the 0.1 millimeter so that I can just barely move it down a little bit. Once I get this adjusted to where I'm satisfied with that, then I can pull my paper out, hit the next location, and it will raise up and move over to the next corner. And then it's just basically a, a rinse and repeat. I can take my paper and make my adjustments here, either up or down, however I want it. Once I get it where I want it, pull the paper out, hit the button there to go to the next location. And again, just rinse and repeat. So I just press either minus or plus to move it down or up. Once I'm satisfied with what I have, I can hit the final location. It will raise up and then move over to that corner. And again, rinse and repeat. I just adjust this down until I feel it tugging on my paper a little bit. And then once I'm satisfied with that, I can pull my paper out and click save. And you see the nozzle will raise up, the X will move over to its home position, and then the Y axis will move forward into its homing position. And then the screen will go back to the main screen, and now it's ready to uh, load in a program. Okay, I'm now going to show you how to use one of my favorite features of this machine and that's the auto bed leveling function uh, but before I do that I wanted to point out you can see clearly here that I've got some uh, big time scratches right here especially right in the middle and in the middle even forward a little bit and both of that those uh, little accidents happened after I had used the manual bed leveling and you notice that the manual bed leveling is pretty far out in the corner so you know you can be you know it's checking that or you're setting it with the paper way out here but then when you go to run and you tell it to print right here in the center this could be higher and it obviously was so I've uh, scratched up the bed here uh, using that so I've stopped using that manual bed leveling altogether and use just the auto bed leveling that I'm going to show you how to do right now so now this is what I'm talking about. You can see the, the nozzle is down here. So when I hit the auto bed leveling, it's going to start raising up very slowly and it will go all the way up until it homes and then it will come back down. But you see it has already switched to the auto bed leveling screen. And you can see, I guess you can see this in the video, there are 25 different locations. They're all numbered and they will change color as it as it checks those so it's going to go through and check 25 places so leveling it this way is much more accurate than using the manual bed leveling because there you're only hitting the way out on the four corners
Okay, when it finishes the checking all of the 25 locations, it will then move to the center and then you can put your piece of paper on here, uh, set it up for whatever increments you want to move it, and I'm going to move this down until I get, let me set it on one millimeter and bring it down here a little at a time. Okay, then once you've adjusted it, and I, you might have noticed it took me several tries, it does raise up fairly high, so you have to, I should have used the uh, larger increment to bring it down faster, and I was trying to bring it down slow, but once you get that adjusted with the paper on that final spot, then you can click save, and it will record all of those locations as well as where you've told it zero is now, so we'll click save. home to the uh, left and then it's ready to load a program in. I really like this new printer from Hicktop. It is equipped with a PEI hotbed as standard equipment and I don't know if you can tell it but it also has the magnetic bed so you can just pull it off real easy and pop off the print. It has a good size print area. It's 300 by 300 by 290. It's super strong and you can tell by looking at the uh, all the different rails there. They're all five of them are identical. So if you have any problem with one, you can just, uh, you know, you don't have to order about, uh, worry about ordering the right one to replace it. You just get whichever one and uh, put it on there because they're all the same. Uh, this printer also supports the resume printing if you have a power failure and also uh, if you need to change filament or something you can just uh, pause it and then resume. I've done that and it works well. Uh, you're also able to adjust the Z offset during the printing and it has a support filament detection right there next to the direct drive Titan extruder. I've run several things with this uh, new printer. This is a six inch hose flange. Uh, I've run some uh, chess pieces, some a knight, a king, and a queen, and several other little small things. And I will continue to uh, use this machine and then probably in a couple of months or so, I will do kind of a review. I wanna make sure I have a chance to uh, kick the tires good on it. Uh, before I do a review. But anyway, if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already to my YouTube channel, please consider doing so. And until the next one, thank you very much for watching.